Hey, y'all. I'm Bud Elliott, and this is my College Football Summer School Series on Cover 3. I bring on the team experts from the 24-7 sports staff and ask them the questions I care about. No fluff. Which players will be toughest to replace? What position groups are sneakily better or worse than I realize? We get you the scoop on each team in 20 minutes or less. Let's go. Hey, guys. Welcome back into Summer School. I'm Bud Elliott. That's Jackson Moore, and that means we're going to talk a little Fresno State, the defending Mountain West champions. You guys need to go to barkboard.com. Check it out. Jackson, welcome back to the show, man. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. No doubt. So 10-4 and four last year, Mountain West champs, a really good G5-level team, especially when, when Jake Hayner uh, was in the lineup. He missed a couple games due to injury. Uh, we'll, we'll jump right into this. Obviously, Jeff Tedford uh, knows how to coach football. Uh, I think if you just assume Fresno State, Tedford, quarterback that's a, you know, probably an NFL, like, guy's going to stick around for, for a while on a roster because how smart he was, that the offense was better than the defense. But the offense actually was not as good as the defense last year. And I'm curious as to, like, what the drop-off here is. Last year when Hayner wasn't in, they did struggle some at times. Uh, what is the, the quarterback situation like this year for the Bulldogs? Yeah, so they do bring back Logan Fife, who started the four games in place of Jake Hayner that he missed. And the first two were not pretty, and the second two, uh, I mean, one of them was a season-changing win over San Jose State. Uh, if they lost that game in week two of conference play, they might not have ever climbed out of that hole, but they hit him with a, a strong defensive performance, got that win, and then they went off for 40-plus points in New Mexico, and then we really didn't see him again the rest of the year um, as the Bulldogs won seven straight. Uh, but they have gone out. They've got a transfer, Mikey Keene from UCF, a guy that started quite a bit as a true freshman, eight and three as a starter uh, over there. Uh, kind of got a rough deal, it seems like, with some of the quarterbacks that came in and out of there and with the coaching staff there with Gus Malzahn, a guy that just seems to be uh, pretty beloved at UCF, but not the guy. Um, so Fresno State would be very happy to have him be the guy. Uh, they had a six-way quarterback competition in the spring. Uh, that has rolled down to about three and a half, <laughs> I'd say. Uh, it's pretty much Fife or Keen or a, uh, a really impressive redshirt freshman, Joshua Wood, who was the top G5 quarterback commit uh, as far as 24-7 ratings go in the 2022 class who redshirted last year. Um, it's likely to be Keen, um, but – the Bulldogs have three quarterbacks. They are all given a shot right now. Interesting. So they, they do lose their top four receivers, at least by a number of snaps taken. Who's expected to step up? Is it one of the transfers? Is it a young guy that, that's going to take the next step? Because that, that is an awful lot to lose, it feels like. Yeah, it's a lot. They've got uh, three different receivers um, on NFL rosters right now from last year's team. And the guy that would have been the guy this year transferred to Washington State, Josh Kelly. Um, so it's really, <laughs> it's pretty bare. Uh, but they bring back Eric Brooks, who was the number two slot receiver. He's caught a lot of passes in his Bulldog career, coming as a, a walk-on and earning a scholarship over his career. And they've got Mac Delena, who has been one of those players that you just have pinpointed as being behind all these <laughs> NFL receivers that Fresno State has had. And now it's his turn. Uh, other than that, it, it's a, a whole lot of questions. They just recently, after spring, uh, brought in some transfers, um, so that is going to change the picture quite a bit. They swung and miss on a, on a lot of transfers the first time around in the recruiting process. Brought in three junior college receivers for spring camp and um, probably second team guys at this stage uh, didn't quite emerge as uh, immediate starting replacements. Um, but they did add a couple of transfers most recently. Jalen Gill out of Boston College, uh, an almost five star out of high school that went to Ohio State. Um, probably answers that slot position, the kick returning that they got out, the, out of the receiving unit as well from Nico Remigio. And they added uh, Mikel Barkley as well, a guy that was at TCU for a few years, had a decent season at Toledo. Um, the one name that comes back on the roster that has not played that could be a factor is Josiah Freeman, six foot three, uh, rangy, was a junior college addition late and redshirted. Uh, Jake Hayner himself pointed him out as the next guy in that room. So uh, there's a lot of uh, expectations on him, as well as Jalen Moss, who was their top recruited freshman last year overall. Uh, he redshirted and might potentially pr – probably Moss or, or Freeman will be starting on the outside based off what we saw in the spring. So um, 
not quite the talent they had last year, but it could still end up being a solid room. So the offensive line uh, returns almost entirely intact. You, you, you lose Bula Schmidt, right, uh, who was a, a pretty good center. Dante Bull, like, I thought he was going to be good, but he didn't really play because of injury, I, I, as far as I, I can tell. It, is there a reason to believe this offensive line could be better? The big reason was probably coaching rather than personnel. Um, and not that Saga Tuatelli wasn't a great coach. He's at Arizona State now for a reason. But, um, you know, there's been the same group and they haven't progressed all that much. I mean, they have from 2020 <laughs> with that was pretty poor, but uh, it hasn't been quite up to, to par and all the talent at the skill position covered for a lot of that. So you got a fresh uh, coach in there and Brian Armstrong who – did some exotic things at Montana State. Uh, they ran the ball very effectively, um, which Tuatelli had done at Army as well. But um, the big issue has been pass protection. So we'll see if if he's the guy that's going to fix that. Um, the Bulldogs brought in some transfers at tackle. That's another big one. Um, uh, they just got Kingsley Ogu from Kansas State uh, very recently. It would uh, not a spring edition, of course. So kind of a wait and see if he can fill in as well as Hayden Poulos, who was an all American junior college tackle who tore his ACL before last year and saw his recruiting, take a dump. He's a local kid from Hanford Fresno area. So uh, if one of those two guys can fill in at left tackle, um, their previous left tackle, Jacob Spomer is maybe replacing Bula Schmidt at center. So personnel wise, it, it could be better um, I, marginally probably, but, uh, you hope the coaching uh, can kick it up a notch. So last year, this defense, as we mentioned, was actually a little bit better than the offense. Now they lose David Perales, who I thought was just, he was like a 24 year old dude, just wrecking the mountain West. And, and most, team, most teams really couldn't, couldn't handle him. They also lose transfers to what, Colorado and Northwestern, but those guys up front really didn't play very much. So I'm kind of curious as to your assessment of this defensive front now with those three guys gone? Like, do the Colorado and Northwestern guys actually matter? Is Perales the only thing we need to worry about here? Yeah, Matt Lawson going to Northwestern, he was a third teamer in the spring uh, preview, they call it there, and uh, pretty much seemed like he was out of the rotation and uh, we're kind of surprised that he's at a Power 5 school based off of that, but uh, he had a, you know, he was a steady Bulldog for five years before that, so not surprised someone's given him a shot like that. Um, Leonard Payne was a, a wrecking ball in 2021 and seemed to kind of butt heads with the coaching staff or, you know, for whatever reason, he didn't play a whole lot in 2022. So um, Colorado talent, Pac-12 talent, but as far as Fresno State's defense last year uh, was kind of on the outside looking in. So um, it is interesting, though, because the guy next to Perales who – kind of broke out and um, became or maybe the anchor this season is Devo Bridges, who was a 250 pound defensive tackle. And uh, now it's probably going to be back at edge. Um, so they've got uh, some spots to fill there. All right, Jackson. So they do lose five of their top seven in the secondary, uh, including a guy who I think got hurt in the spring. You get transfers to Oregon, SMU. Is this the potential trouble spot for this defense? You would think, based off of uh, that description, you know, I would say at cornerback, um, Braylon Luck started the season, got hurt, and then the spring got dismissed from the team. He's at Texas Tech, uh, just committed recently. Um, Kale Sanders going to SMU. He was starting out the year more of a starter, kind of got uh, unseated by the end of the season. Um, so at cornerback, they bring back Cam Lockridge, uh, who was uh, just – Standout starter all season long, transferred in from Hawaii. And then when Lux got hurt, Carlton Johnson stepped in, and he was terrific as well. So that one-two punch of Lockridge and Johnson was really the key uh, for those last three games where the defense seemed to really hit a different level. Um, the depth behind them is, is there's not much of it, and uh, they're both last year seniors going into the year. So you know that's a spot you're concerned about, both for depth this year and for the future <laughs> replacing those guys. But uh, if those two are on the field for 13, 14 games, uh, they're going to be in very, very good shape. And then at safety, um, you know they lose Evan Williams to Oregon. That was a big blow. They thought maybe he would go pro. They never thought he would transfer. Um, so that was tough. Um, they did bring back, um, uh, or they did bring in 
a pretty worthy replacement. Uh, Dean Clark out of Kent State was a 100-plus tackler a couple of years ago, got hurt last year, kind of fell off the radar a bit, and they were able to, to bring him in. A very similar player to Evan Williams from what we saw in the spring. He's even wearing the same jersey number. So a, a lot of people have remarked that it feels like the, the same guy is back there for the most part. And we'll see if that comes to, to be the truth when the season comes around. But uh, the other safety spot uh, is really the only big question mark. And um, uh, Stephen Comstock, a former quarterback who has had to kind of wait his turn at safety, they think he might be the guy. There's a couple of players that probably aren't too far behind him either. So if they can just account for that one safety spot, this secondary is in uh, really good shape. They bring back Maurice Norris and Nickelback in this 4 2 5 scheme. So uh, if there's not a hole at safety, uh, this secondary should be really, really good. Not, this is why I love summer school. Like I totally would have thought that Fresno secondary is screwed here and get as, as long as they get their safety spot fixed there and, and stay healthy, hmm. they're probably okay. If you guys want that in-depth Fresno state coverage, make sure you check out Barkboard and Jackson really appreciate the time. Yeah. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it.